Hey everyone, this is Chris. I'm here to talk about a new uh, a new multi tool, but more specifically, a, a certain design aspect of it that um or a flaw that uh, a lot of people are some are discovering, some are claiming it's not really an issue, but um we'll get into what it is and whether and why I think it is or isn't an issue. And um, <clears throat> also we'll discuss uh, Leatherman themselves. Uh, I did send them an email discussing this issue. They um, they replied back with the typical customer service response of someone who is in customer service to deal with customers, but maybe not extremely technically minded. Um, so uh, that happens a lot. That's not a, a fault on Leatherman. Their customer service is great, but I, I don't believe they understood what I'm saying what I was saying in the email and what a lot of other people are saying um, <clears throat> about the bond. Um, great multi-tool. Uh, I ordered it as soon as possible uh, on Amazon arrived. Um, I didn't even wait for a pocket clip to show up. I pulled it off my um, T4 because I wanted to use this guy so badly. So um, definitely don't think that I am uh, bashing this tool, quite the opposite. It, um, <clears throat> it became my new EDC because I'm such a fan of this, um, uh, sorry for that, the classic style, how slim it is, and, um, this plus a clip, and it's perfect, also, it's not a, a classic tool that I have to worry about damaging, losing, etc., um, I can actually use it without fear of, uh, anyway, so the, the issue itself, what is the issue? The knife, so, um, uh, it, it was first pointed out to me by Ben over at, um, Texas Tool Crib, and uh, when he showed it in his review, I thought to myself, well, that, that doesn't seem like it'll be a hu huge issue. It, I don't think it'll affect me. And so I carried this bond for, oh, I don't know, three days or so, and it was great, and it was exactly what I expected and wanted, sleek, lightweight, simple, traditional, you know, there's something that I enjoy, you know, even though uh, ben was saying that, and a lot of other people are saying this is for foreign markets. Me, I just, I, I really do enjoy that traditional, um, you know, call me crazy. But yeah, it, it did replace my wave for a few days, uh, but not anymore. But uh, anyway, tool set, great. Um, so let's get back to the issue. When I sent the email to Leatherman and they responded, it was the same response I'm getting from a lot of other people in... Um, the Leatherman groups that I'm in. And what they were saying is, oh, you have a defective tool where it's it's loose, so it's coming, you know. The customer service lady said, oh, that's, that's not right. It, they're definitely supposed to be tighter than that. You know, send it in and we'll replace it. But they, these people either haven't handled it or they're not super technically minded. Uh, ben does a pretty good job of explaining I'll dive in maybe a little deeper um, I can't remember how far he went into it but so basically what you have here is um this is the spring and sort of lock of this tool um this is what maintains tension when it is open you can hear and see that snap um <clears throat> which loosens some of the other tools, but so the thing, the, the, the issue is, you see, there's actually a lot of tension here. I actually wish that it was a little bit less tension or that it built up a little more gradually towards the end. But it, it, the problem is it goes from zero tension whatsoever to a lot of tension. And by zero tension, I don't mean there's like a little tension. I mean, literally zero because let me see if I can capture this. As you can see there, there's a little, a literal air gap where the knife tang, you know, this part that interacts, this is still part of the knife, even though it's the very bottom part, a tang interacts with the spring and that's what gives it resistance when you're opening a lot of resistance. I wish that was a little lighter and then a nice lock. The lockup is great. I love it. The resistance is perfect for the lockup. No complaints there. Um, I actually really like how stiff that is once it's fully opened. The problem is here. I know what you're saying. And, um, well, if you're using the tool, what's the problem? You know, and that's what I thought too when I saw Ben's video. Until 
Yeah, they had to grab something out of the um, toaster oven. And I, so I unfolded this and it was hot. I needed to pull the grate out. Um, and so if you can see the, the wire cutters actually kind of bind a little, that's fine. Just means they overlap and they'll cut well. So to open it, I need a little push and my other hand was occupied. So I do what I normally do. I, I grab it here and grab with these two and then pull with these two, right? And what that did, which I didn't notice until I went to actually reach in there and use it and I felt it poke my finger. Now, luckily I wasn't doing a very heavy duty task, but if I was doing something where my, you know, I'm going to open my tools, I'm under a car or something, I can't really see, it's dark and, you know, and I, and there's this nut, I gotta get in there and I gotta tighten it. And all of a sudden I've got this blade sticking out. I get, I get the tool on the nut and all of a sudden I, I crank down on it or I need, or I slide my hand down to try and, um, get more leverage further down. That'll do a nasty number on you, especially me, because I keep my knives extremely sharp. I'm a, I'm a knife maker, so sharpening is one of the things I'm obsessive about. I keep my knives extremely sharp, and yes, that will easily gouge me open and uh, to the point of stitches. Will it guaranteed happen if I use this? Maybe not, but I, I was uncomfortable enough. I think the odds are bad enough that um. I stopped carrying it. I went um, back to my wave or my scale tool on lighter days. I thought to me this was the perfect compromise, but now a little uncomfortable using it. Um, <clears throat> interesting point to note, Leatherman kind of went on their own there because this isn't like a normal thing. Everyone else, even the cheapest Victorinox, to Harmony knife you can find, if you pull, immediate snap, pull, snap, right back in. It doesn't matter how loose or how bad the pivot tension is. There is a spring that is actively pressing um, on the tang of the blade. You can see that moving right there. So even when fully closed, there's still spring tension keeping it closed. And that's not a Victorinox thing either. It's literally almost every knife. This is a, a lockback knife so it's a locking knife but still same thing just slams shut it's which is ironic because this is a knife so if i pull it out of my pocket i'm going to be using the knife so it's a even less of an issue but it's even more of an issue when the tool you pull out and you want to use is not a knife and now a knife wants to get involved in the task you're doing um <clears throat> you know another one i brought to the table Classic old case, you know, these guys have been making knives, you know, forever, forever and ever. And look at that, three knives, zero knife danger. <clears throat> Even you go, when you go over to, to certain locking tools, um, the Wave, for example, you know, it's it's a positive lock where the, the detent in the lock bar dives into a little hole of the blade and you have to overcome that to release the blade. But even though it's a sudden release, it's still under constant spring tension. Same with um, most pocket knives. See, there's tension, 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 and then release. Um, <clears throat> this one, extreme example. There's a lot, you need to put a lot of tension on it, but when it goes, it goes. This one, it takes almost nothing to get that blade out there. And that'll, that'll, in my, I think that'll do a lot of damage. It's like a little gut hook with a sharpened tip. Um, shocking thing. Here's what was most shocking to me is when I thought to myself, well, I'm going to pull out my PST as a comparison and show them how they messed up and why they should go back to a design that works like the Victorinox like da, 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 like, and like the PST. But then when I actually opened up my PST, I noticed it's the same idea. It's not really under, let's see if I can get it on camera. The spring doesn't really touch until you're about actually three quarters of the way out. So you're, so what I said to myself was, how is this, how is this tool that's been used for decades not having that issue? This brand new tool already is. That cut out. That cutout and that beveled edge is great for accessing your knife and easily deploying it, even though it's still really stiff in the beginning. 
nothing and then full stiffness. It's, anyway, whereas the PST, you open it up, where's the, there's the blade. <clears throat> it's a very small pocket. You can't get that knife to come out by accident. No matter how you're using these pliers, that knife just does not come out. With the bond, it's very easy. Easy enough that it's happened by accident with me. And I have I used this tool for about three days before it was happening to me. <clears throat> so what do I think? Well, do, do I think that the bond is ruined and that this is, uh, you should never buy this tool? I don't know. You know, um, I, would I recommend it? Would I buy it as a, I actually wanted to buy bonds from now on as gifts because they're such, such a great price. And, um, and the tool sits there, the quality's there, it's all Leatherman. It's the Leatherman I want to give as a gift. Not a wingman, not a sidekick, I didn't, I'm not a huge fan of those. But, this I was very excited about. Until this knife issue. Um, I don't think I can, in good conscience, from my experience, gift this to someone. Um, because I would not feel good if that ended poorly for them. And like I said, it is a design, not a quality issue. I've seen other people post and discuss this and it's such an easy fix it's such an easy fix that this was done deliberately they deliberately wanted it to have no spring tension so maybe they thought it would be easier to open or something i don't i don't know what their thought process was there but there's nothing no tension whatsoever and um that's huge oversight um i don't know if the engineering team maybe doesn't have any like knife guys on their team uh, on there like you know guys who really you know, use these things, and the number one rule is you don't want a knife that cuts you. And I know Leatherman is, they're no stranger to this. Most of the other tools, you know, the, the Surge and the Wave, if you look in there, there's that little, little square. Right? Now, if you pay attention to that, as I, if I can keep it in focus, as I open this tool, I'm sure most of you know this already, but if you don't, uh, you'll learn something cool today that pin rises up and now the blade is inaccessible. And it's the same for both blades. So the Wave has two knives and neither of them are a danger to the user. The Bond has one knife and in my experience, in my opinion, regardless of pivot tightness, you could loosen this all the way up or really crank it down. I mean, if you crank it down, it might be a little hard to accidentally get it out there. But if you did get out there, the, my point is it's staying there. You know, if for some reason you're using the, the screwdriver on your Victorinox and for somehow, which isn't going to happen, you manage to get that blade up, it's going back in. With the bond, let's say you crank that pivot all the way down, but you're, you're in there doing some work, you know, it gets real nasty sometimes, real dirty, real dark. All of a sudden that blade's up. I don't know. Uh, so, what what... But I had a couple of people ask me, what do you think Leatherman should do about it? You know, what, what can they do about it? You know, easy. Offer voluntary recall where they just replace the blade. That's it. Don't throw away the whole tool. Don't waste the whole tool, blah, 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 and make it voluntary. Though people who think it's not an issue can perfect. Keep the tool. Also update further newer models, you know, but <clears throat> easily, easily. You could just... Sorry about that, guys. Uh, ran out of memory and had to do a quick cut there. Anyway, so if I'm correct where I was, I was discussing what uh, Leatherman can do about this. Well, what I recommend is they just enlarge the tang. They continue following that radius all the way around. Don't leave a gap there. If, in a perfect world, this is possible, radius this a little more. So it starts off with a, a little bit of spring tension here. It doesn't take much to snap it back in. Even though even Victor Knox does it well. A little bit of spring tension. So it just, it just pops back in on its own. And then if you radius that correctly so that the radius itself increases, if it goes around, I mean, you guys do this all, you cut it out with computers and stuff. It won't be a hard thing to do. The tension would gradually increase instead of going from absolutely nothing, which is bad, to absolutely everything, which is not great. Um, so... But well, first and foremost, fill that gap. And I know you guys are capable of it. Because during that uh, little memory cutout I had there, I bought a slew of Leatherman products to prove my point. 
here is the T4. Now, this is the lock, which represents the spring, even though this is a passive lock. This is an active lock that you have to actively in disengage. If I pull out any of these tools, look at the lock. Lock sits there. What about these ones? Look at the lock. Lock just sits there until you reach a certain point. Then the lock engages because why it's under magnetic tension. But the engineers that worked on the free series thought it's so important to keep the knife safe that it doesn't rely on a magnet or maybe it's because of its shape. I'm not sure. But either way, if you watch that lock, as soon as you start pulling on that knife, it's immediate spring reaction. It's not perfect, as you can tell. But hey. It's, it's slightly better than the bond, and at least it's trying. The other tools, nothing. That's fine. Blade, which is more dangerous, a little bit more safety. Maybe this just needs some lube. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to try to rapid fire through these. We wasted enough of your time. Um, so, here you go. Pliers, Leatherman Signal. Blade, nothing. It's locked in by the little peg, just like the wave. Surge, I use this the most. This is the one I carry every day at work. I beat the sh shiznit out of it, and it um still works great. Look at that. Despite how abused and forgotten, sometimes, one time I forgot it out in the lawn for two days. It fell out of my pocket when I was mowing the lawn. Cleaned it up, put it back into service. Look at that. No dangers whatsoever, despite how beat up it is. All right, moving on. P2, P2, P4. Leatherman's kind of modern flagship models. I didn't see anything retaining in there, so at first I was like, hmm, I wonder if the blade's gonna come out on its own or something. Nope, it's retained by that little sort of plier thing. The base of the plier retains the blade. <clears throat> Skeletal. The most minimalist, the one you think you have the least amount of safeguards, still has that lock detent. So the lock bar has a detent ball on it that provides resistance tension. So the odds of you accidentally open this are significantly less than the bond. So <clears throat> Leatherman is not ignorant to the issue of a blade's dangers to someone who is using pliers. We've seen that they're very aware so this must have slipped through somehow. I'm not the only one that's having this, this issue, this concern. I've seen several people make posts about it. Some of them have looser pivots. So even just, you know, maybe just locking their pivot pops the knife out or something. Um, to me, pivot tension doesn't matter at all. If this was super stiff and I'm doing the kind of work where I'm really gripping this tool hard, and it, and it slides out under even stiff pivot tension. It doesn't matter because it's, it's there. You know, it's, it's, it'll become an issue. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really hoping Leatherman addresses this. You know, offers that voluntary recall. Just a quick blade replacement. You know, just a slight, slightly different geometry in the tang. Um, yeah, it'll cost him a bit of money. Um, which, I mean, this is something that Maybe they should have caught in the beta testing. I don't know. Um, I can't say. I'm not a part of it. I'm not in their company. And um, I just hope they rectify it. Because for me personally, it's shelved. I've met a few people of the same opinion. I've met a few others who have the opposite opinion. They're saying it's not an issue. You know, there's one guy who in the groups is saying, Oh, you got to shake it like a maraca to get it to come out. Or, I mean, or you're just using the pliers and you, you, you go to open them and it, it, it's, it's easier to, the more you use them, statistically the odds go up of you accidentally doing this. So, no, it's, it's not a, you're being ridiculous with the tool issue because I, I can't even get it out when I shake it. It's not that. It's a, with this huge cutout combined with zero tension, there, there, it's two, two factors that I haven't seen before. Zero spring tension on the knife. Still does fine. I mean, I would prefer if there was, nonetheless. Big cutout and zero spring tension, in my opinion, recipe for disaster. Um, <clears throat> personal recommendations. If you don't have a bond, 
uh, would I recommend you and get one or don't go and get one? I am, I'm going to say neutral. You know, if you think it's not an issue, go ahead. There's enough people saying that it's not to not. There's also a few people like, for example, Ben from Texas Tool Grip, who has a lot of experience and credibility. He really works with his tools. If he points it out as an issue, I also, and, and I don't work for a huge construction firm or any, I don't know what kind of work he does, but, um, for me, I just work in my shop, my little workshop, and to me, it's it's, a, it's an issue. So if it's an issue to both of us, it may very well be an issue for you. Um, if you want to buy one anyway, yeah, sure, go ahead. If it's a toy or a collection item, uh, feel free. Am I going to recommend it to others? If my if my brother, who doesn't have any multi-tools, comes up to me and asks me, wait, wait I need to buy a multi-tool, what's the cheapest good one? I can get, I would say, go look for a really, an excellent condition, Wave Plus or something is what I would recommend to him. I, w I, w I would want to say this, because obviously the cheaper your recommendation, the more likely they are to get it and start using a multi-tool, but I'm, I'm not recommending this. I'm not using it myself. I'm not going to recommend something that I don't use myself. So, <clears throat> Leatherman, I hope you guys address this so that I can go back to carrying this so that many others who have lost or shaken confidence in this product um, that for a reasonable fix, I know you're gonna, you, you may or may not lose money on replacing blades on all of the people who choose to have them replaced. Start making them from now on and you keep that price point, you guys are gonna make money on this. They're real winners, you know? You update the design, I'll gladly, you know, tell the world, shot it from the mountaintops, the bond is perfect. Man, I, I am bummed out that this happened. A simple, lightweight tool with a pocket clip has been my dream for a long time. And, well, back to the wave it is, I guess. So, Leatherman, I hope you guys fix this. If you guys uh, uh, want to reach out to me, my email is desousa.usmc at gmail.com. You can look at my YouTube channel name if you want to know how that's spelled. And please let me know that you guys are updating design or reach out to Texas Tool Group. We all get our news there for Leatherman and stuff. Uh, sorry for the long-winded video. It seems that's the only thing I'm capable of. This was supposed to be five minutes, and um, that's how it goes. I dive deep, and I go on tangents. So I hope you guys um, learn something from this, even if it's not applicable to you or uh, you find it somewhat valuable. I'll see you all around next time.